To begin, we'll drag off the tool sets that we need to complete the tutorial. To move a selection, it's quite easy. Position your cursor on the selection, press the mouse button and drag to a new location. Position the cursor using snaps for precise drag and drop. Watch the prompts. It says hold the control key down while you drag to make a copy. To drag this circle, we'll position on the quadrant point and drag to an end point, or position the cursor at the center point. Notice in the data input window that circle is defined by its center point. That's its coordinate. As I move the circle, we'll position the center over the origin and the data input window will show 0, 0 as its x and y coordinates. Changing the value changes the actual absolute coordinate for the center of that circle. Notice, positioning it to the left of the origin shows a negative x value. If I plug in a negative y value, it relocates it to a position lower than zero on the y-axis. Using snaps, we can also use alignment to relocate objects. This makes it quite easy to continue building components as you see we've just done here. Now we've made our selection. We have a whole combination of lines and circles here. By dragging it from one point, we can relocate it anywhere we like. Holding the control key down, you can snap a copy to the end of that line to its end point. Now we'll select our combination of lines in a circle, and from our transform tool set, we'll choose the translate tool. This allows us to move by setting a starting reference point and an ending reference point. You also can use the data input window. The labels say DX and DY. D stands for delta or change. So if I enter in 2, it changes the location of the selection by 2 inches. If I enter in 1, it moves the selection up. If I put in minus 2 in DY, it moves the selection down. Using what you've learned, we'll drag this arc by its quadrant point, drop it at the end point of that line, make our selection, and from a quadrant point, drag the selection to the end point of that line. Now to make a little electrical switch, we'll select the circles, but notice when I did a pick window, I selected the line and point as well. Going the other way, I still got the line. Press Shift and deselect the line or simply click on a circle to select it and press shift to select the other. Then holding the control key down, drag the selection down to make a copy. From the view menu, go to user view and choose the mirror exercise. Again we'll make a selection of these circles and center lines. Notice that we've got a corner that's been selected. Hold the shift key down and drag around it to deselect that endpoint. Select the mirror tool. To use the mirror tool, we'll define an axis, much like the binder of a book that you're using to make a mirror around. Two points, and it mirrors the selection around those two points. Notice that it moved them rather than copying them. Hold the control key down and mirror two points and it will make a copy. And now again from the view menu, user view and the rotate exercise. 
We'll open up a pick window around these two lines and choose Rotate. There are two different methods to using the Rotate tool. Choose the Rotate Three Points option. This allows us to set first the rotation base point where things will rotate around, and then the next two points define the angle of rotation. Again, you set a point to rotate around, and then two points to define the angle to rotate around that base point. The base point does not have to be on the selection set. It can be anywhere in the drawing. To make a copy when you rotate, simply hold the control key as you make the copy. There are other ways to rotate in your drawing. We'll make our selection over on the right. Careful not to select the arrow. In this case, we'll use the one point rotate tool. In this case, we'll set an angle to rotate by. We're going to rotate this around to create a full 360 degrees, and we want three all evenly spaced, so we'll divide that and make it 120 degrees for the angle. Click at the center point for the arc, and it rotates it, but it moved it. Hold the control key down to make a copy. Now, select the arrow, and there are yet other ways to rotate. You'll notice that both linear or rectangular arrays are available, as well as polar, which are circular arrays. So we'll choose the Polar Array tool. This allows us to define a center point and create a circular pattern around that point. In this case, we're going to create 10 of those arrows rotated around the base point evenly spaced. 360 degrees, that would mean each needs to rotate around 36 degrees around the center point. So that is the step angle. Once defined, click OK, and it creates the array for us. Now from the View menu, again go back to our User Views, and select the Resize exercise. Different options to resize individual items and selections. Here we'll select that Smart Polygon and change its width on the Data Input window. If I turn on Show Points with it selected, you'll see the points used to create it. Now while it's selected, if I drag one of those points, it drags the whole object. However, if I select just that point, I can drag it and resize and reshape that Smart Polygon. There are two lines here. If I drag around their endpoint, it will select the endpoint of both, and I can resize and reshape that. We'll drag around this polygon and circle and make a selection here, and now access the Scale tool. This allows us to create a ratio of an object or selection's original size to what size we want it to be. You have an option here to have proportional scaling or allow you to set a different scaling ratio for each x, y. In this case, we're actually going to pick points to define the scaling ratio. We'll scale about this point. That's the constant point that everything will shrink or enlarge around. We'll click here to define the current size from that first point to here. And then a third point defines how far out that will go, and that creates the scaling ratio. Now from the View menu, choose User View and Gripper. To access the Gripper to help with your editing, open the Inspector and click the Gripper Properties tool. Click to enable the Gripper. The Gripper works with a selection set, so once enabled, select part of your drawing and the Gripper will appear. The handles indicate the different types of edits that are available to do directly with your mouse and cursor using the gripper. The arrows allow you to 
move or drag your selection set. The arc allows you to rotate and the yellow handles are scaling handles. You can control the size of the gripper and the handles with the size drop down. Selecting the whole group of lines and circles allows you to use the gripper to manipulate the entire group of entities. User position allows you to relocate the gripper, basically setting a temporary origin so that you can scale around a specific point or rotate around a specific point all using your mouse and cursor and the gripper. You can turn on and off certain portions of the handles Here we have just translation handles or move handles. Just the rotation handle, the arc. And here are the scaling handles. Notice uniform scaling. Now you can scale in one direction or another using the individual handles. Using set origin, I can move the gripper and the temporary origin off of our selection set, and in this case use the gripper to rotate around a different part of the drawing. 